What's going on, y'all? Welcome to this special bonus episode of the Half Price Concessions Podcast. I figure we'll probably start doing these on some weekends for release. These episodes may not be quite as long as the midweek episodes, but they'll try to dive into some different content. With that said, this week's bonus episode is about three-time NASCAR Grand National Series winner, Gwen Staley. I first became aware of who Gwen Staley even was on our Tracks of Yesteryear Volume 1 episode because he had won a race at Coastal Speedway in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And, on Racing Reference, he had my hometown of Burlington, North Carolina listed as his home. So I wanted to dive in and do a little extra research on his story. On the other side of this break, we'll take a look back at the racing career of this North Carolina native and see what we can find. Hey guys, have you heard about Anchor? Well, you should. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. First and foremost, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your cell phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you. It takes all the work out of it. Your podcast can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This episode of the Half Price Concessions podcast is brought to you with support from Performance Center Racing Warehouse. In addition to being the home of the PRW chassis, Performance Center offers in-house setups and consulting, plus suspension and chassis pull-down analysis, along with their fabrication shop that can reclip your race car with the fastest turnaround in the industry. Give Roger Johnson and the Performance Center team the chance to earn your racing business by calling them today at 704-838-1400 or visit them online at performancecenter.com. That's P-E-R-F-O-R-M-A-N-C-E-N-T-E-R.com. Gwen Edward Staley was born July 6, 1927 in Wilkes County, North Carolina, just four years before the last American hero would be born in the same county. His parents, Mr. and Mrs. Ranson Staley, were of the unincorporated town of Roaring River, just off North Carolina Highway 268. Gwen was no only child by any means. Among his seven siblings was his brother Enoch Staley, who would co-found the North Wilkesboro Speedway with Jack Combs and Lawson Curry. Enoch would end up being the only president of the Speedway until his passing in the spring of 1995. But back to Gwen's story. Gwen's first foray into NASCAR Grand National Series racing was in the 1951 Southern 500 at the legendary Darlington Raceway. In a time before the Daytona 500 or the World 600 even existed, it was the Southern 500 that was the crown jewel of stock car racing. Plus, at the time, it was the only 500-mile race on the schedule. Staley's first race conveniently featured the highest number of drivers to ever start a race at Darlington Raceway, as 82 cars would start the 500-mile marathon of speed and attrition. Staley would start the race in 53rd in his 1951 Ford. His sponsor owner was listed simply as the Wilkes Boys, no doubt paying homage to his home county. Staley would complete 303 of the 400 laps and finish 52nd. According to Racing Reference, that effort earned Staley a whopping 50 bucks. Staley did, however, manage to outlast and outfinish drivers such as Buck Baker and Curtis Turner. Staley would compete in one more race in 1951 at his home track, the North Wilkesboro Speedway. However, the homecoming would be short-lived as Staley would finish 25th in a 26-car field at the 1951 Wilkes 200. Once again, driving a Ford, Staley would watch as Fonty Flock and his Grey Ghost would earn the $1,000 winner's payday in his 1951 Oldsmobile, just ahead of names like Lee Petty, Joe Eubanks, and Tim Flock. Staley's lone race of 1952 would be his second attempt at the Southern 500 at Darlington. However, his Ford would only complete, complete 74 of the 400 laps due to an overheating issue and have him finish 58th in a 66 car field. 
Staley's first finish in the top 10 wouldn't come until the 1954 Southern 500 at Darlington. Starting 25th in a 1954 Cadillac owned by Paul Whiteman, Staley would complete 342 of the 364 laps and finish a then career best eighth just behind Fireball Roberts and pocket $670 for his effort. The story of the day on September 6, 1954 may have been the win for Herb Thomas and his fabulous Hudson Hornet, but for a 27-year-old Gwen Staley, it marked the beginning of more successful times to come. In 1955, Staley would switch over to driving a Chevrolet for Hubert Westmoreland, a Burlington, North Carolina-based businessman who had fielded rides for such drivers as Glenn Dunaway, Curtis Turner, Tim Flock, and even Billy Myers, just to name a few. Staley would make 23 of his 24 NASCAR Grand National Series starts in 1955 driving for Westmoreland, and Staley would return the favor, recording 14 top 10s, and finishes inside the top five at Raleigh, Darlington, North Wilkesboro, and a season-best second-place finish at the Southern States Fairgrounds in Charlotte, North Carolina. Staley would finish 10th in the season's point standings behind names such as Tim Flock, Lee Petty, Bob Wellborn, Herb Thomas, Junior Johnson, and a host of others. 1956 started off on the right foot for Staley and the Hubert Westmoreland outfit. Back-to-back -to -back top 10s at Hickory and Charlotte Speedway were then overshadowed by a string of nine straight top 10 finishes for Staley. But still, Victory Lane remained elusive for the pairing at the Grand National level. A pair of wins in the convertible series at Hickory would be the only victories for Staley as Westmoreland's driver. A 65th place finish at the Southern 500 at Darlington would be the final race that Staley would drive for Westmoreland in the NASCAR Grand National Series though the two would continue to work together in the NASCAR Convertible Series for 11 more races the following year. However, by the time of the 1956 Old Dominion 400 at Martinsville on October 28, 1956, Staley had teamed up with car owner Julian Petty, and the best was yet to come for the 28-year-old driver. In 1957, with Julian Petty as his car owner, Gwen Staley accomplished two significant firsts in his career. He earned his first career pole award at the 1957 Buddy Schumann 250 at Hickory Speedway, where he'd go on to finish fourth in the race. After a seventh at Norfolk and an 18th place finish at Lancaster, the pair headed to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. On Monday, August 26, 1957, Gwen Staley in his 57th career NASCAR Grand National Series start would be victorious in his 1957 Chevrolet. Leading the final 15 laps at Coastal Speedway at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, he made a whole thousand dollars that night and won by a full lap over Eddie Pagan, Fireball Roberts, Buck Baker and company. But his name would finally be etched in the record books as a NASCAR Grand National Series winner. Staley would follow up by winning two of the next three races he entered. Grand National win number two would come on Thursday, September 5th, 1957 at the New York State Fairgrounds in Syracuse, New York, leading all but 10 laps of a 100-lap feature to pocket yet another $1,000 payday. Ironically, at Syracuse, the driver who finished second to Staley was Lee Petty, the brother of Staley's car owner, Julian Petty. The third win would come on Sunday, September the 15th at Langhorne Speedway in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Staley again piloting his 57 Chevrolet to a win, leading the final 85 laps of a 300 lap marathon at the One Mile Dirt Oval, collected a $4,500 payday over Whitey Norman, Johnny Allen, Rex White, and Buck Baker. Staley won by a full two laps. The now 29 year old Staley had also tied his record for most top fives in a season, with seven top fives in 1957 even though he raced in 11 less races than he had in 1955 when he accomplished the same feat. He'd also won more money in 1957 than any other season in his NASCAR Grand National career to date. And even if Staley wasn't getting to run all the majority of the races like Buck Baker and Marvin Panch and Jack Smith, he was getting to victory lane. Add in a convertible series win at Norfolk, Virginia for car owner Julian Petty, and it was a four win season for Staley 
that had him at his peak success. In 1958, Staley would start his season off with a fifth place finish at Daytona on the old beach course, driving for Buck Baker in a 57 Chevrolet, finishing just a lap ahead of the Holman and Moody teammates of Curtis Turner and Joe Weatherly. The next day, Staley would finish fifth in the convertible race at the same track, driving for Buck Baker once again. Staley would follow that effort up with a fourth-place finish at Concord in the Grand National Race, followed two weeks later by a fourth-place finish in a convertible race at North Wilkesboro, his home track. Staley's final Grand National Race would be Saturday, March the 15th, 1958, at the paved one-third mile Champion Speedway in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He collected $470 for running second to Curtis Turner in front of 5,200 fans in a race that just took under an hour to run. The next race for Staley would be a convertible race in Richmond the following weekend. On Sunday, March 23, 1958, Gwen Staley was racing in his 1957 Chevrolet for car owner Julian Petty, as he had done many times before. According to the report published in the Daily Times News of Burlington, North Carolina, at the time of the race, Staley was running fourth in a field of 23 cars when his car lost control, turned over three times, and came to rest with Staley pinned underneath the wreckage. He was pronounced dead upon arrival at the Richmond Memorial Hospital. He was 30 years old. At the time of his passing, he was survived by his wife, Bonnie Jester of Wilkes County, three daughters, and a son who was only two weeks old at the time of his father's passing. His funeral would be held in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And so in lies the story of Gwen Staley, a native of Wilkes County, North Carolina, who found his way into the NASCAR record books as a three-time Grand National Series winner and two-time winner in the NASCAR Convertible Series. Thank you for listening to this special bonus episode of the Half Price Concessions Podcast. Our thanks to our sources for this episode, RacingReference.info and the Burlington Daily Times News. Thanks for listening. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're listening to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, or the Himalaya apps. If you like this episode, please leave us a five-star rating and a positive review. If possible, it really helps us out a ton with getting this podcast out to more people. Follow us on Twitter at HPC Podcast, and also like us on Facebook by searching for The Half Price Concessions Podcast. You can also email the program directly at halfpriceconcessionspodcast at gmail.com. My name is Tyler Williams, and I sincerely thank you for listening to this podcast.